and then I licked the bag clean like a lunatic. I caught up so fast, you guys. It was so fast. I started giggling. Hey, this is Billy Wayne Davis, and this is the time I saw God in the carpet of an apartment in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I think I had been doing stand-up comedy maybe five or six months at that point, and I had just told my parents that that's what I was going to do for the rest of my life, and I was going to quit school to pursue this dream. They were oddly okay with it. Like, I was just trying to make them like, this is who I am. They were like, yeah, yeah, we know, it's cool. And I was like, I don't trust you. But at this point, I was also like really experimenting with like the way things are. So I had done mushrooms like two or three times, enough times to know what worked and what didn't work. It was my birthday and my sister's boyfriend was really, we got along really well. We planned to do mushrooms at his apartment. We were gonna have dinner with my sister and then go to his apartment trip balls. He planned this whole themed thing out. Like the dinner had mushroom pizza, there was like fried mushroom appetizers, Mario brother napkins with the mushrooms on it. And my parents showed up to the dinner cause it was my birthday and my sister was like, I couldn't not invite them. And they lingered for a good hour. And then they were like, okay, we're gonna go. Sure enough, I'm an hour behind everybody. So I was decided I'm gonna catch up. So I just did everything they had left in the bag, all the magic dust in there, I downed like a Doritos bag, and then I licked the bag clean, like a lunatic. I was like, oh, I'll catch up. Nothing else will happen, I'll just catch up. That's what I thought, and I did. I caught up so fast, you guys. It was so fast. I started giggling about 10 minutes. After you take it, and you're like, this is going good. And then I catch up to everybody, and there's wavy stuff. We're all looking at this picture, giggling. It's the best time in the world. And everyone's laughing. They put on some music. I'm with everybody. We are one. And then I keep going. Where they're having fun, that's when I notice, you guys not see the darkness that's coming? And they're confused. And I was like, well, I'll go somewhere else. I'll go into another room. They won't understand. It's just a thing. And I just kept blasting off. I can hear them giggling. I'm not giggling anymore. Things are getting quieter and quieter, and I'm getting smaller and smaller in this room to where I'm like, oh, I'm in space. And then my hands don't make sense. Nothing makes sense anymore until it all makes complete sense. If you understand what I'm talking about, you understand what I'm talking about. If you don't, just strap in so i start getting okay with everything in my new existence and then i got sad real sad because i was like i love my parents i love them so much but i don't know how i'm going to communicate with them because i understand how everything has to be and how everything is and it's going to be okay and about that time i look down in this shag carpet of this old old apartment and Oprah Winfrey's face was just smiling at me in this very knowing, very sincere, warm way. She just winked at me and it all went away. And I believed that wink with every fiber of my being. I was like, Oprah said she gave the thing, it's gonna be fine. And I still believe that God is a black woman. Maybe not Oprah, but that's who it is. So as I'm calming down, someone, and I to this day still call them the evil spirit. They just walked in, giggled, because I was still staring at the carpet trying to talk to Oprah. And they just said, Hey, did you know you can kill yourself with your own mind? And so for the next hour and a half, I tried to kill myself with my own mind because I believed after a minute that I was like, well, if I can kill myself with my own mind, then once I do that, it's powerful enough I can bring myself back after I do it. And then 8 Mile came on the TV and I got distracted with uh, Eminem's performance because he did a really good job. He really did. And it meant a lot to me, and that's how I came down from this trip. Then the next day I woke up and I was like, you know, I think my parents are gonna be okay with me doing stand-up. And I'm still, to this day, I'm looking for that guy. Like, if you guys know who he is, we're gonna get him. Tales from the...